Next is file management. Every data power appliance will have a file management system. Okay. What is this file management is? File management is basically a repository in order to save all your service related documents. Okay. So when I say a document, it might be a public certificate, it might be a private key, it might be a visual file, an XSD, an XML, and an XSLT. Any file that you wish to use it in the data power, before you use them, you have to upload them mandatorily into file management. Okay. Okay. And whatever the hierarchy that you see here, right? Like cert, checkpoints, config, export, these directory names and the hierarchy in which it is being arranged remains the same across all the data power domains and across all the data power appliances. The first directory, if you see, it is cert. As the name itself indicates, cert is a directory. One second, sorry. Okay. So cert is a directory where you have to upload all your public certificates and private keys. Any public certificate and your data power private key, if you wish to use them, you have to mandatorily upload them into cert directory. So how do we upload? Next to the cert directory, you can see there is an actions. Just hit on actions and hit on upload files. Okay. Choose a file from your file management. This will be like your local system. It will ask you to upload a certificate. Let's say I will choose a sample certificate called chase.cer. This is from the chase website. Okay. Just hit on add and upload. <coughs> and continue. So every time when you have been given with a public certificate and a private key, you have to mandatorily upload them into cert. So now if you look into a cert directory, you should be able to see your newly created or newly uploaded certificate with so and so date and time. And along with that, you can check the details of the certificate. Like what is the expiry, what is the common name, everything you can view with respect to the certificate. Clear? See, as the name itself indicates, public certificate is the one which can be shared with others, whereas private key is something which we are not supposed to share with others. Right? Yes, any question? Sir? Yeah. Uh, so Ganesh, how will you know like which one is private? Yeah, so that we have that naming convention itself is, it will be .cer will be a certificate which will be public and it will be a private key .key. Okay, and always when you and, and this CR thing like we can change that name to anything, right? Yes, change dot PM also you can make. Okay. PM format or CER format. So usually, like when you generate a certificate and a key, you will have two separate files being generated. One will be a public certificate, and the other one will be a private key. Whatever that you see it in the browser, you take any browser into consideration. That will be a public certificate. See, if you take this HDFC banking net banking website, if you check the details over here, and if you go to the view certificate, this will be a public certificate. Because no one is going to share their private key. It is always a public certificate which will be shared across. Okay. 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 So see, this is even a point. And, uh, yeah. And oh, the, the Santosh and uh, these all the times the, the browsers are getting loaded with the certificates. Yes. From all the yes, yes, correct. So you take any any website, automatically it will have that public certificate. Then only it will make that uh, connection secure. And uh, how does the, the communication is happening between this uh, public certificate and this private key? I mean, how the communication is happening? 
No, with Let respect to um, data power. No, see, if with respect to data power, if I have to have a communication, I have to configure that SSL. Uh huh. But in the browser, by default, your browser will try to interact with that particular website, and internally, your browser will exchange or get in touch with that. Then only. See now, if you see my data power GUI, it is not a trusted one. See. Yeah. Right? Because you can see. This is not a trusted one. So only when there is a secured connection, then only you can see that this lock symbol will be in a green color. Yes. Right. So my browser will interact with this particular website and it will fetch that certificate and to make sure that it is a trusted one. But since the data power is locally, I'm installing it virtually, so it is not allowing me to use over the internet. So similar concept of public certificates and private keys, we use it at the data power end as well in order to make a secure connections. And uh, Santosh, you said that okay, the data power can understand that uh, the site is secured mm -hmm. by seeing what are the symbol it has and by understanding the certificate that is being loaded in that uh, particular uh, mm -hmm. website. That's mm -hmm. fine. How does that particular website believe the data power? No, no. This is see the one which I open directly is I'm just directly opening it in the browser. So now if right. I want to make a connection from a consumer to data power and data power intern if it has to call a backend, then I have to configure the corresponding SSL in data power. Wherein right. I have to use my public certificate and private key. Right. Similarly, as you said, if I have to authenticate the other party, I have to use the other party's public certificate as well. Okay, okay. Like we can say that mutually, my data power has to exchange a certificate with the other party, then only we can make a secure connection. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So that's a different altogether SSL. Yes, yeah, so we can discuss it. Later. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, followed by CHK point. CHK point is nothing but checkpoint. Checkpoint is nothing but taking a backup of the entire data power domain so that if something goes wrong, you can always use this checkpoint to revert back the changes. Okay. For example, see just search for checkpoints. You can see as of now, sorry, let me just open here. You can see as of now the checkpoints directory is empty, correct? Now what I'll do, I'll create a checkpoint with a name called let's say Jan 19th and hit on save checkpoint. If you just save the config and refresh it, you should be able to see that new checkpoint over here. See? With this name, which has been taken on so and so date and time, that means now, let's say after this, taking this checkpoint, you will do something. Okay, let's say you started creating a service or you did a firmware upgradation or you did something, because of which your existing configurations are failing. So in that case, if you have to roll back the changes, you can hit on this rollback. So when you hit on this rollback, whatever the configurations that were present at this point of date and time, your data power will go back to that stage by discarding all the changes that you did after taking the checkpoint. Correct? Okay, the volatility is jealous. Sorry? Uh, Santosh, the one entry like this itself is enough. No, no. Create n number of checkpoints depending upon our need. Right. So whenever I see that I have to do a firmware upgradation or whenever I have to do some changes on the appliance, it's always better I take a checkpoint. If something goes wrong, I can use that checkpoint to revert back the changes. So you can take those checkpoints. 
For example, there are the five configurations I have done. For example, let us say configuration A, configuration B, configuration mm -hmm. C. Like that, I have created five checkpoints, right? Mm -hmm. Five configurations. Mm -hmm. But in any case, if I want to go back to the configuration A, mm -hmm. sorry, configuration C, A, B, C is the third one. Mm -hmm. okay? In the A, B, C, B, A, B, C, D order, it is the third one, C, okay. right? Okay. And, uh, and then, for example, if I revert back, what are the changes I have done? Mm -hmm. A, B, C will only be uh, you know, getting back, Correct. but not in D, right? Yes, absolutely. Correct. Okay. So whatever the changes that you made after taking the checkpoint, and if you roll back the changes, that will be discarded. So whatever the checkpoint that you took, and whatever the configurations that were present at the time of taking the checkpoint, only that will be reverted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This, this, this is only for the purpose of remote attack, right? Not for the backup. No, no, yeah, correct, yeah. You cannot say it is entirely as a backup, but yes, correct. Can we do it at uh, any level, like default domain or mm -hmm. yes, you domain? You can do the checkpoint in any domain. Usually, any domain. yeah, when do we take these checkpoints usually in real time is when we try to promote a service from one environment to other environment, we take these checkpoints. Right. Okay. Let's say you have five services which are already up and running in the test environment. Now you are trying to deploy a sixth service into your test environment. So let's assume because of your sixth service movement, the other five existing services are failing. Right. So in that case, in order to go back to the previous set, you we'll just roll back the changes. So whatever the five services that was up and running, that will be restored. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and also we can also think like this. For example, in the A, B, C, D case, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, A and the configuration, B configuration, C and D. Mm -hmm. When we configure it, and later we understand that A and B is enough, and we don't have any use with the C and D, and we are having the issues with the C and D. Yes. In the case, if we go back to the uh, checkpoint B, then I can have only A and B. Yes, it went back to only it. Correct. Yes. Okay. Right. Clear checkpoints. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll stop here. Santosh. Yeah. No question. Like. Yeah. Suppose if there are like ten domains, some ten developers are working on it parallelly. Mm -hmm. But as an admin, if I create one uh, checkpoint. Uh, today, mm -hmm. so will it be created for all the ten domains, or it's only for default domain? No, it's all, see, all the configurations is domain specific. Okay, configurations are domain specific, domain. not at the default level. Yes, yes, correct. So all these, what you okay. do from the checkpoint, like see, whatever the certificate now that you uploaded into the SVR test domain, right? This will be visible uh -huh. only in this domain. Okay. So that is the case. That is the case. The one who holds this uh, the domain need not be an uh, administrator. Developer also can put the checkpoints. Yes, correct. Because this doesn't need any admin access, right? Yeah. Because as a developer, you have access to this entire domain, right? You can do everything yeah, yeah. with the domain. But at the appliance level. If you have to do, you can only be an admin, and that can be done by a default domain, right? In what kind of checkpoints can we keep in default domain? Like, no, no. If, even for the default domain, see, let's say it's not about the service. Let's say you have created the domains, and that you have to take a checkpoint, right? And uh, user groups, all yes. this will be affected. Yes, yes, everything will be there as part of the checkpoints. Okay, okay. And apart from the checkpoint, we also have another option called export that we are going to discuss. So export will help you rather than this checkpoint that will be more beneficial to you. And uh, this Santosh, can I ask you a big question? Mm -hmm. And if I don't know, as we know that. And uh, the code is being uh, put into this. Uh, is people, you know, the code is people coming into this device. 
for example, there is a version, for example, version 5 is there currently, okay. Mm -hmm. After version 5, after one day, after 10 days or one month, the version 5.1 will come to the picture. Mm -hmm. After that 5.2, after mm -hmm. one month, after that 5.3, like that, right? Mm -hmm. For every release, if I put the checkpoint, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. after end of the release, for example, today 5.2 release is uh, finished. Mm -hmm. Now I put the check checkpoint for this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. In any case, after that 5.3, 5.4, 5.6, it go, goes on like that. In any, any case, if you want to come back again, 5.2, mm -hmm. that is the case. And if I, if I use this check, uh, this uh, what we call, if I use this 5.1, uh, 5.2 checkpoint, mm -hmm. that will take the device back to the 5.2 level. Correct. So if you take that 5.2 checkpoint and if you roll back that, so whatever that was there at 5.2, that will be loaded. So it's only basically it what is the uh, internet theoretically what it does is simply it is the only it goes based on the date and time, right? Correct. Yes, absolutely. Because when you take a checkpoint, it will take the time, right? So whatever the configurations that were present at this date time at this date and time, so your data power will go back to that particular stage. Okay. Okay. Okay.